Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome to another RP1 tutorial on this channel. Today we're going to be going over the 3000 kilometers downrange contract. As with my going orbital video, I'm just going to show the science nodes that I have unlocked for this. And it's very simple, just the start parts, post-war material science, and post-war rocketry testing. To begin with, we're going to grab an Aerobee telemetry unit because we do need some avionics for our unguided second stage. Then we'll grab a conventional structure fuel tank. We'll mold that to fit on top of the telemetry unit, then change the tank type to aluminium high pressure. This is why we picked up the material science technology node as aluminium tanks have a much better dry mass than steel ones. Once we have finished with the nose cone, we will copy and paste that fuel tank and place it underneath for the main body of this second stage. After that, we will grab an Aerobee engine. We will upgrade that to the XASR config by clicking on engine and then clicking on switch to XASR1. Then using the part action window again, we will fill up those two fuel tanks with the correct fuel configuration for that Aerobee, trying to get the burn time to about 40 seconds, which is its rated burn time. Then we will place a ring decoupler underneath the engine to begin work on the first stage. This contract now requires full control over the rocket for the first 50 seconds of the flight, so we're going to grab a procedural avionics unit and place that directly underneath the ring decoupler. All in, this rocket will have a mass of about 18.4 tons, so I'm going to set the controllable mass on the part action window to 18.8 tons just to be safe. Then we will mold the avionics to try and get the utilization to as close as 100% as possible. After this, we will grab another conventional structure fuel tank, set its diameter to 1.5 meters, as that is the diameter of the RD-101 that we will be using for our first stage. We will set the tank type to just aluminium because the RD-101 is not a pressure-fed engine like the Aerobee is, and highly pressurized tanks do weigh considerably more than their non-pressurized counterparts. Once finished with the tank, we will grab an RD-100 series early engine, place that on the bottom, and like we did with the Aerobee, we will upgrade the config to the RD-101, as this provides higher thrust, a better specific impulse, and a longer rated burn time of 86 seconds rather than 75. Next up, we're going to grab some B9 procedural wings and place these on the bottom of the rocket for tail fins to provide a bit of aerodynamic stability. In order to mold these like I am on screen right now, we can hover over the wing, press B, G, or T, and move the mouse to mold them into the shape that we so desire. I've made these relatively small at the bottom, ensuring that I have my center of mass and my aerodynamic overlay up to ensure that I have the blue ball underneath the yellow ball. That way the rocket will prove aerodynamic and we will have a good time. As the second stage of this rocket will be completely unguided, we are going to want to utilize spin stabilization to ensure that the rocket maintains its course. In order to achieve this, we're going to change our snap angle to free and rotate the wings ever so slightly at the bottom. We only want to do a very small increment with this. Anything drastic will make the rocket spin so much it will tear itself apart. Then we just need to to make sure that this rocket is completely fueled, we'll grab a couple of launch clamps, place those on the bottom so that we've got time to spool up our engine before we release those. And then finally, the last step of this design is to pitch over the entire rocket a few degrees. That way, when we launch it, it should hopefully perform its own gravity turn enough to get us 3,000 kilometers downrange. So we're on the launch pad now, and I'm going to launch this just to show that this will fulfill that contract. I have MechJeb flight recorder up on the left because that is the best way of determining your downrange distance. Even though the first stage of this rocket is controllable, I'm not going to touch the controls at all. The pitch that I changed in the vehicle assembly building is enough that it will not need any user input. The only thing that you need to worry about for this rocket is hot staging between the first stage and the second stage. So we're going to want to fire up our second stage engine about one second before the first stage runs out. And then we're going to decouple once that engine has fully throttled up. We need to do this in order to provide sufficient ullage for the second stage. Otherwise, that engine will not fire and we will not get that contract completed. So for the design of this rocket, I have gone with just procedural parts and RO engines. That way, even if you have a very basic install of RO and RP1, you should be able to replicate this quite nicely. If you don't want to replicate this and you just want to use this design, I will include a link to the craft file in the description of this video. If you want to come up with your own design for this, the general rule of thumb is you need about 6,000 meters per second of delta V to achieve 3,000 kilometers downrange. We have finished our burn now and you can see we have easily surpassed that contract and we have completed it in fact i think this design almost gets to 4000 if not 4000 that is it it's actually rather simple and you can do it with a really really simple rocket i hope this video has helped and i have been karnasa and i will see you later